Welcome back to Necromancer, where you play as a necromancer and try to take over Calradia in under 90 days. And we're going to be starting a new game. If you would like to check out the mod, there is a link in the description. And let's go. Alright, so we get to choose a banner. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether there's anything really suitable for a necromancer. So I'm just going to go for a standard. There we go, I'm just going to go for a, a classic, shall we say. And now, here it is, we can actually spec into things, which I very much like. So, uh, what are we going to do? Look at that, throwing damage, range. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure what I really want to go for right here. I mean, we could technically go for like things like surgery, wound treatment. I think wound treatment could be really, really important for us. So we might want to just go for 15 in that and then just go for literally like a good amount of points in that. And then otherwise we probably want to spec into strength and power strike. So let's just do the remaining points in that. And I believe we don't, don't we have a pole arm or something? Do we have a pole arm or a two handed? I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't really matter because whatever the case, we're going to be leveling up as we go forward. And we can just randomize a little bit. There we go. All right, so your minions bow before you're waiting for your orders in these last days of Calradia. All right, so they have added some additional stuff, as you can quite clearly see, which is really cool. This is actually version 2 of Necromancer itself. So challenge mode, play as 90 days to dominate Calradia. You can turn it off or, you know, to, to play forever if you so desire. I am actually not going to change anything here. I'm just going to emerge from the darkness. All right, so here we go. I'm actually really, really uh, in interested to see exactly what happens here. And uh, a couple of people in the comments actually gave me some really cool tips and information and, uh, and, and things. So hopefully I'll be able to utilize those to the best effect. Corruption mechanic is still here, of course. And we can press H, yes, if challenge mode is available. So they have listened to the community because people said, why, why is there a 90-day limit why is there a 90 day limit why why can i not just take my time and do what i want to do over a certain you know over a longer period of time and they have listened to that and they have added in that challenge mode option which is in my opinion really really good anyway to do that you just make use of the new mechanics yes of course all right so we of course can now take a look at the shortcuts and things so relocate to your dark tower minions follow the main party corrupt the land minions join and then detach okay so look at this so you can just get them you can just <laughs> you know get them to join you and things like that i'm actually just going to get everyone to join me right now just so that i can kind of prevent enemies from oh they've made the corrupted land much quicker oh nice oh that's very good actually thank you very much for that thank you mod creators you have done a great job there because personally i was finding that the corrupted land was taking a bit too long but that's just me you know maybe that's just me anyway We've corrupted already someone, which is really nice. And we can also corrupt villages. Someone actually told me that you can corrupt villages. And this is going to take 24 hours, apparently. I, uh, is it is it going to uh, continue to do that if I move away? I'm actually unsure about it. So I'm going to just corrupt. I'm going to continue just corrupting areas around here because it is just so quick. Look at this. It just happens so incredibly fast nowadays. And look at that. That's one of our guys already. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so we already have villages. I'm actually just going to corrupt this as well. And I don't know whether it's going to actually do that. Like, I don't know whether I need to be there, if you know what I mean. Oh, Sultan Hakim has already joined us. That is actually kind of crazy. All right, so this is going a lot better than it was previously so i'm pretty happy with that let's corrupt that as well as i say i don't know whether you will be able to corrupt things and then just leave it or whether you have to actually stand by the village for a certain period of time should we go in and help this guy or should we just you know what let's just stand next to him and just get like a corrupted land oh sultan hakim's going in there yes he is okay i'm gonna go and help I'm going to go and help. Okay, I actually have no idea who I'm helping right now. So let's have a look. New arm. New arm. There he is. Okay, so let's charge the enemy. We have 574. And, uh, well, we're going to see how we do. All right, so try not to cast magic while mounted. Let's have a look and see what else we can do here. Oh, they've added a nice pop-up here as well. So that it doesn't just appear in the text box. And so it's a lot easier for you to kind of get an idea as to what to do. So that's really nice as well. All right, so I'm just going to summon some illusions then, I suppose. And uh, let's uh, let's do that. This is the first time you use the illusion ability. You will create a clone of yourself that will fight for you. And uh, it has a cooldown 
of 15 seconds. That's actually really nice. I'm going to just play as an infantry for the moment. They've added a bar in the top left as well. Wow, how, they, how much work have they done on this? They've done so much work. It's absolutely crazy. Okay, so I'm going to uh, continue spawning illusions as much as I can. And then we're going to see if we can maybe make a, uh, a good push with them. Because, of course, most of our... <laughs> Most of our units are, well, I'm not going to say useless skeleton warriors, but they're, they're not exactly great. And I'm pretty happy to just have, you know, some familiars that can run around and actually deal some damage, because I'm a bit worried about them, to be honest. Oh, a new soul has been added to the pool. Look at that. Did you see that? A new soul has been added. Oh, okay, well, never mind. It's completely... Ooh, okay, I don't even know what's going on here. Seems like people are dying all, 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 all around me. And I just cleaved that guy's head off by the looks of things. So that's pretty cool in itself. But yeah, my text log has completely given up. As you can clearly see. It is literally just like, I'm out of here, guys. I'm out of here. Alright, so yeah. Hopefully I will be able to upgrade my Dark Tower now as well. Because I could not do that before. And I would assume that they fixed that now. Whatever it was, you know, whatever problem it was, uh, you know, having. And your HP is restored a bit thanks to your minions. Look at this. We're actually already level 4. And I am continuing to murder. Yes. I like this. This is this is much, much more improved, imp improved from the previous version, in my opinion. Because the previous version, while it was extremely fun, it was a little bit hard. You know, it was a little bit hard. And it was making things very, very difficult for the necromancer himself to actually do anything, you know, useful. Because he would just get swarmed by enemies, and then he would literally just die. But now that they've added like a, like a HP restoring mechanic, that really helps a great deal. Look at this, I'm restoring my HP, not by something too powerful as well. It is not too powerful, the restoration of my HP. I can still die. If I am up against 30 enemies and they all surround me, yeah, I'm dead. But if I'm up against maybe like five or so, Probably not going to die as a result of that. So I really like that change. They have done a fantastic job with this. And I am elated because I love this kind of I love this kind of thing because I love necromancy in general. I feel like it's really cool in these kinds of situations. Like playing in... Um, I mean, here's the thing. Necromancy has been done in other, in other mods. But it has never been done on such a, such a scale like this. In other words, it has never had... You know, you've never had a mod where you are really very much a necromancer. Like, yeah, you, you know, you can create a character that focuses on necromancy, sure. And you can create a character that uses spells and summons undead and, and things like that. But you can never really... You know what I mean? You can never really play as, like, the big bad guy, if you know what I mean. So it's very much got those... Uh, as many people said, it's very much got those overlord kind of vibes and I really like that I think that's really cool because I, I am a fan of Overlord I think that's a really really fun series but yeah otherwise it is just fun it is just pure fun to literally play this mod now because beforehand yeah as I say it was fun but it wasn't it wasn't like super fun because you were still going to get murdered by all kinds of things because you literally just weren't weren't that strong and you couldn't level up as well, which was, of course, a big problem because then you would just basically be stuck with the same stats and that would be kind of difficult. You know, you'd be stuck with the same stats and you would only be able to increase your weapon proficiency and that's basically it. You wouldn't be able to get more power strike or anything and it would be kind of difficult, you know? But now they've made it not imbalanced either. Personally, I don't feel like this is imbalanced. I think that in general, the only reason why we're winning this is because we completely outnumber the opponent. That's literally the only reason why we're winning this. But if we had an even battle, we'd probably have a pretty hard time. So you've definitely got to take that into account as well. Anyway, I believe there's one enemy remaining. And hopefully he's going to be dead relatively soon. And uh, then we will be able to move onward. And I would like to be able to see whether they've made changes to the enemy garrisons as well. Because... One thing that I noticed was that each enemy garrison, you know, no matter where it is, whether it is in a castle or a town or something like that, has upwards of a thousand units in the defense. And that is 
very, very strong. So I'm hopeful that maybe they changed it because it is kind of harsh to have such a massive amount of units in there. So maybe they've changed it, maybe they haven't. Whatever the case, I will just have to try and continue corrupting the land as much as possible. As you can see, people are being corrupted like no one's business, which I very much appreciate. And this guy's actually following me? Are you serious? Are you serious? You really want to fight me right now? Look at this. We're corrupting so many people right now. This is really good. It seems like they have increased the sensitivity of the enemy vassals whenever they come close to your corrupted land because we were finding that in the previous episode that it wasn't really working as immediately as you might expect. You know what I mean? So yeah, that definitely is making a big difference. And I'm gonna actually use a corrupted land here and then I'm gonna go in and help Count Regis in a second. We've corrupted Mundalia, very nice. Let's go and help this guy. And wait, 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 wait. Who do I have to help now? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting mixed up because I don't know how, who's on my... Oh. They're both on my team. They're both on my team because I literally... Ah. They might be stuck in a, in a, in a constant battle now, which is a bit of a problem. Okay, well, there you go. I found a bug, guys. Maybe... Uh... <laughs> Maybe we can fix that or something, but uh, yeah, that uh, that is kind of amusing, I gotta say. That is actually kind of amusing because now they are stuck in this battle. I wonder what is actually going to happen if I go in here. Let, let me actually just see. Okay, so it seems like we do actually have to kill him. Oh, okay, well, that's definitely not something that I would like to do, but I think that in general it just wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> I wasn't meant to really make a corrupted land right next to the two vassals that were fighting each other, and as a result, it has caused this kind of status quo kind of thing because they didn't want to attack each other with auto-resolve, and now we're going to be fighting a whole bunch of skeletons. <laughs> Which in itself is quite funny, and the mod is literally telling me, hey, you've you've done something bad here, because as you can see, I'm getting script errors all over the place. So that is definitely something that they, they might want to look at, the mod creators, because this is, in my opinion, probably one of the best, if not the best, mod that you can play to really focus in on being a necromancer. And really really kind of dedicating yourself to that because as i say previous efforts to be you know be a necromancer or whatever they're really really good now don't get me wrong they're really good because they're there are things like uh fantasy cal radio fantasy cal radio is a really really cool mod to do if you just in general want to partake in a dungeons and dragons kind of experience it's really really fun you can play as a necromancer there you can summon undead units and all manners of other things you can, uh, you can even summon Death Knights, I believe, and, and things like that. But you can never really play as this kind of evil lord of the dead and then actually, like, going out and corrupting enemy lords. You know what I mean? You can never really do that in, in Fantasy Car Radio. It's more of a mm, sort of normalized experience. It's more a, a little bit as I say, less focused on that one aspect, because if you made the necromancer that powerful, then it would just throw everything else out of whack, and it might as well, you know, not be in the game, because it would just be so imbalanced. But necromancer does it in such a way so that you basically are concentrating on just this one thing, which is exactly what it's trying to do, and I think that that is very, very cool indeed. I think these guys are going to be absolutely stuck. As you can see, they seem to be absolutely stuck. Oh, Oh, what? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Did you see that? I literally just brought everyone to me, and that includes my vassals. Yes, it includes my vassals, and you know what that means? That means I can actually take these towns or these castles with insane amounts of garrisons, because if you press Y, look at that, I've got now 2,000... 300 units in my army. That is insane. That is so incredibly insane. Very, very pleased to see that kind of change. That is really good because that means that you don't need to be like, 
oh, look at this garrison, you know, there's 1,500 guys here. That's way too much for me to be able to handle with my 300-something units. Oh, no, don't worry. Look at this. You now have 2,300, and we can now head straight in and do some damage. Actually, do some damage if I didn't misclick. Okay, so there you go. So now we can go straight in there. It's going to take nine hours. Probably should have specced into some engineering, shouldn't I? And there we go. We've corrupted even more people. So let's get let's get even more lords to join me. Even more lords. Look at this. More lords. Yes. There we go. And now let us head in. And we only have a battle advantage of minus one. And I wonder whether I'm actually going to be able to use my meteor ability in the siege. Doesn't look like it. It actually does not look like it because I pressed H just now. And I don't think I can. Let's try it. No, it does not work. Okay. And uh, spells do not work in general in sieges by the looks of things. Which is a shame, because I would have liked to have spawned in a whole bunch of my illusions, and I would have liked to have used my meteor spell to completely kill the entire garrison, but that is indeed probably the reason why it's disabled, because otherwise you're probably going to be able to win sieges by yourself, just keeping your units outside of the walls, and that's, well, that's just not, you know, that's just not realistic, it's a bit, a bit imbalanced. Not realistic, he says, as he's leading a band of undead skeletal units up a ladder to fight, fight the Saranids. Yeah, not realistic. Well, you get my point. You get my point. But as I say, I feel like this definitely has that Overlord feel. If you're a fan of Overlord, you're probably, you're probably going to have a, a bunch of fun here. And uh, if you're in general a fan of playing the bad guy, playing the, uh, the necromancer that is looking to conquer the world, then you're probably going to have a whale of a time here. And uh, I think my soul collecting is probably not working here either, so I probably won't be able to restore my HP. So sieges are, are, are pretty, pretty difficult. They seem pretty difficult to me, at least right now. So maybe, uh, maybe I just haven't gotten it to actually work just yet, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to reap any souls from the enemies here. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to go into my character sheet at the moment and uh, just spec into a whole bunch of strength and just get myself like massive amounts of HP and attack and then just spec into something else. I mean, I don't even know what I'm supposed to spec into here. I should really have spec into some Weapon Master, but I'm going to do that the next, the next couple of levels because we're leveling up so incredibly quickly that it is just amazing. You know, you can just level up and get some more Weapon Master and stuff. So don't really need to worry about it. And we're already killing things in one hit, but I basically just wanted to make it so that any enemies that we come up against that are slightly more, well, slightly more focused on um, survival, so like Mamluks and things, and maybe some veteran footmen or something that have, you know, decent armor and stuff, then those guys are definitely going to be things we want to uh, be able to kill in one hit. And uh, amusingly enough, we are actually pretty slow, so I am going to have to do something about that. Probably spec into some Weapon Master, probably spec into some Agility at the same time. And we are receiving reinforcements. I'm actually kind of surprised we're receiving reinforcements, to be honest. I, I thought I was doing a pretty decent job of distracting most of the enemies. And I'm actually kind of surprised we don't... Can we crush through blocks? I don't think we can crush through blocks with my weapon at the moment. But, uh, you know, hey, you know what? I don't need everything, you know, I don't need everything. We're already a super powerful necromancer who's capable of summoning legions upon legions of undead to uh, help us out in very many different ways. So I don't think I really need crush through blocks on my weapon, but mod creators, if you're listening, you know what to do. Add, add, add that crush through blocks because that, that is super fun to have. And uh, you know, I, d I don't want to be blocked by a recruit with a shield, you know what I mean? But if it's against your creative vision, don't do it, you know, I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just being picky, you know, I'm just being picky because that's literally the only thing that I would, I would change about this mod now, uh, because literally you get the wonderful siege combat with many, many enemies and let's face it, I'm playing with a pretty low battle size at the moment, I, I'm pretty sure I'm playing with about 150, which is... I, I'm going to say pretty awful. Uh, you know, I, if, if I had known that that change had been made, because I did not boot up the game before recording this, because I wanted it to be a surprise, and, you know, wanted to see all the changes for myself firsthand and record all my first impressions as it happened. 
And uh, if I had known that, I would have increased my battle size to about 300, maybe 400, because most of the models and things are still native-based, with the exception of, of course, my armor, and uh, maybe the armor of the skeletons and things like that. But yeah, the point is, is that uh, I probably would have raised it pretty high so that we could have massive battles and, and, and things. But here's the thing, the problem with increasing your battle size, it is going to make some units be very difficult to reach so they're going to spawn in some hard to reach areas and it's going to be a bit of a pain and that's not the mod's fault you know that's not the mod's fault at all it is literally just the fact that you know warband can't can't really handle that uh, they didn't i mean tail Worlds didn't really think about you know people increasing the battle size and you know there being such a like for example th those those roofs right there i mean we could probably get up there and drop down and then kill anyone on there but you know what I mean? There are these places that generally tend to have some units. Like, for example, here. This guy's stuck. He can't move. And, uh, you know, if that was happening with an enemy unit and it was causing my units to be a little bit weird, you know, behave a little bit weirdly, then that would be kind of annoying. So battle size is a bit of a fickle thing that you need to be a bit careful about changing. But, uh, you know, it really depends on you. If, if you want to deal with those kinds of little little glitches, in the matrix then uh, you can decide to do that if you want to but otherwise i'd highly recommend checking out this mod if you didn't already check it out on the previous version then this is it's, this is definitely probably the best time to do it uh, unless they're going to come out with something else that's even better because they have added so many different things it's actually crazy how many different features are different from the previous version i i literally thought that that was basically it you know i thought it was finished you know, with, uh, with the exception of a couple of fixes and things like that, but they have outdone themselves. They really have. They've done a very good job. And you know what's even better? The ragdolls. Have you noticed the ragdolls and the, the legs? The legs of the enemies as I kill them, they just fly upward. It is hilarious. I love it. It is good. It is the simple things in life that you really cherish the most. And leg flailing sarinid units as you kill them uh, yeah that's definitely the ragdolls are very funny anyway there you go we were able to achieve victory and we we only had to eliminate 331 but here's the thing you need to have a certain amount of vassals and a, a, indeed a big conglomeration of massive force of units to be able to even go in there without getting a uh, sally out all the time because a sally out is super annoying so that's definitely something to take into account. So you can't just go in with 300 units. You're going to need more than that. And uh, I find it kind of amusing that we can now reap souls in these scenes, but we can't do it in the sieges. So I'm not entirely sure if there's a reason why we can't use spells in the sieges. I think that in general, a lot of spell casting mods have a problem with spell casting in sieges. So it must be a limitation of Warband, probably. It probably is a limitation of that. So uh, yeah, because otherwise Warsword Conquest, for example, that, ha that also has magic. That would allow you to use magic in sieges, but it doesn't. So I would assume that there is definitely a, uh, a restriction there. But otherwise, there you go. And I am actually not going to... Should I request this? Why should I request this? I am I not the leader? <laughs> Maybe I'm not the leader. Anyway, I'm going to just ask for no rewards I guess I don't I don't really want the I don't really want the castle to be honest okay so there you go necromancer horde let's just let everyone go and I'm just going to make corrupted land I'm actually going to get every I'm going to get everyone back again so that they don't take it so easily the corrupted land I think has been made larger which really does make a big difference in my opinion so someone's gonna someone's probably going to get corrupted there there we go we got that guy and He's now defending it, I think, I guess. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And is my Corrupted Land still here, by the way? Yeah, it is. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, so it's still under siege. I actually wonder whether he's going to go through with the siege and actually take it, which would be kind of amusing. So not entirely sure. But I love the fact that you can literally just call your units. Boom, 2,600. You can just call your units instantly to you and then just have a grand old time. It really is great. And we're just going to continue putting uh, Corrupted Land in these sort of choke points and uh, try and get as many vassals joining us as possible. Because, of course, we are technically at war against everyone in the world. 
So theoretically, they should all be passing by here at one point or another. So we're going to be gaining a lot of vassals that way. And I apparently gained some experience somehow. Don't, don't exactly know how I gained 13 experience, but I mean, uh, level 13. So I'm perfectly happy with that. I really don't mind. All right, so let's go over to the Dark Tower. And uh, who knows? Do you want to see more of this, by the way? Do you want to see more of this? Do you want to see this as a sort of mini-series or something? Because I have 90 days to complete the entirety of the map. In other words, eliminate every single one of these factions. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but uh, if you want to see how I'm going to do it, then by all means let me know in the comments. I know quite a few people wanted to see it, so I'm just wondering if you still want to see it. And if you do, then that's great, because then... Uh, you know, then we can continue onward. And let's see what's going on here. What, what's the, what's the, why is the caravan going... Why is the caravan being all weird? That caravan's being all weird. I, I don't know why... why what's, what's happening there? Okay, let's uh, let's help him. Okay, there you go. Did, did, did we win? <laughs> raw silk. Okay, I'll take some raw silk. Sure. Okay, that's kind of weird. The caravan's being a bit strange. But yeah, Caraf Castle is also here. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, something's something weird is going on at Weyer Castle, but I don't really care. Because we're going to go into the Dark Tower now and see if we can spend some souls. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Okay, so you can actually rename. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wait, Naz Nazarick? Wait. What? What is it? Oh, it's been such a long time since I've... Oh, since I watched. Uh, by, the, by the name entered above. Yeah, there we go. All right, so yes, fantastic. If that is if that is spelt incorrectly, I am just going to facepalm all over the place. But uh, if it's not spelt, if it's you know if it's incorrectly spelled, then uh, I apologize. Anyway, uh, we need seven thousand six hundred gold apparently to be able to use souls. What about trading? Okay, trading is not doing anything for me right now, by the looks of things. Can I ah? Okay, so, uh, uh, no, no? Okay, apparently I'm not going to be getting any money for that. Okay, that's interesting. Hire a necromancer. Let's hire a necromancer. Okay, and let's enter the Dark Tower. Okay, so, is there anything that I can do here now? Because uh, beforehand I couldn't see the use, use souls uh, selection in the menu. But now we can. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the best thing that we can do basically is just receive our wages and uh, we can also take a look at our necromancer here as well there's the necromancer it is an archer and he's got a human head which is a little bit weird but he does have some very good proficiencies and he's probably capable of doing some rather amazing stuff he does not have a human head when looking at him but he does have human feet which is kind of funny but uh I don't really mind. I really don't. So let's actually just speed things up a little bit here. And uh, let me see if I can maybe go and... Let me go and uh, corrupt some of the other areas over here. Because we have that 90-day limit. So it is pretty important that we uh, that we do this. Look at this. We're corrupting all these guys, which is just insane. I'm actually wondering... Hey, you know what? I am wondering something. I now have 3,200. Let's see if I can do this. I would like... Wait a minute. Surrender. No? No one want, No. Okay, apparently the guy doesn't want to surrender. I don't think there's any diplomacy available in the, uh, in the mod. Because, let's face it, we are a necromancer. No diplomacy. No. No, we will not. We will not be diplomatic. And I can actually... I can actually auto-resolve this. Which is hilarious. Because, as you can see, it is not... It is actually not going well, as you can quite clearly see. So let me, let me no, no, that's not going to work. Okay, so let's just, let's just go in. Let's just go in then and see what we can do. But yeah, it is uh, a bit of a shame that you can't auto-resolve. It's probably because all the skeletons are really, really awful in terms of, you know, stats and stuff like that. So auto-resolving probably isn't going to work. But you only need to eliminate about 300 enemy units at each location. Uh, to be able to fully take it, which is not actually that that bad, because personally, I really don't like those drawn out sieges. I don't like sieges where where it goes on and on and on for like a thousand units or something like that, because those are if if I am playing a particularly strong character and I don't have any sort of 
well, I don't have any risk of being eliminated and it's not really a challenge and it's just literally a grind to get through all of the enemy units, then it can be annoying to do siege defenses, for example, where there are like a thousand units or something like that. But because we are playing such a cool looking character and a character that has a goal, the goal is of course to, you know, conquer Cal Radia in under 90 days, that is a fun thing to do and I don't mind partaking in these kinds of sieges where you just eliminate 300 units and then a couple more people from the keep and then you can continue onward but I don't think I would be that much in favor of larger sieges which would have you know have us fighting the entire 1500 I think that would be a bit much because I don't really want to be in the same siege for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that so yeah I, I, I mean, maybe that's not all, you know, maybe that's not all of you, you know, maybe, maybe you prefer, you know, having those longer sieges, and that's absolutely fine, you know, you can, you can try and do that, because I think that the, the, uh, the mod is probably editable with, uh, it's not Morgs, is it Morgs? Morgs item editor? I, I, I'm not entirely sure now, because I know that there's another, another way that you can, uh, edit various settings and stuff like that. And maybe you can edit the amount of siege waves or something like that. Maybe they've actually added a camp menu in uh, in Necromancer right now. So I definitely need to check that out as well. But uh, yeah, as I say, if you want to see more from Necromancer, which is this mod, then uh, and from me, that is, then let me know. And I'll be happy to play some more. And we'll see what we can do about conquering the Sarenids. Because so far, I think we're doing pretty nicely here. Uh, I don't know whether the mod creators are going to think about, you know, updating it anymore. And I don't know whether it's going to be save game compatible or anything like that. But if it isn't, then it's not really a big deal. You know, if I do make a mini series or something like that, then I can just catch up pretty easily, I suppose, because we are a powerful necromancer and nothing really, you know, nothing really to worry about here. And uh, for the most part, we're basically just killing recruits, which I got to say is quite nice because that means I don't have to worry too much. And we can get a nice foothold in the area and we can start spawning units here and there and uh, generally what i would have done is just waited for my wages so that i could actually show you the soul system because i have no idea what the souls are for but uh the thing is is that we're on a time limit and if i'm going to use this save for a mini series i kind of want to get going if you know what i mean i want to make sure that we are using our time in the most appropriate way possible and how many units do we have left oh yeah only about a hundred remaining so it should be pretty easy and there we have it that is indeed a victory for us and that is about uh, 330 units once again and that is generally what you're going to be facing we did lose a bunch but again we are undead and we can just summon a bunch more so nothing really to worry about there i actually really like fighting when we have the ability to reap souls I like that a lot, and it seems like Reaping Souls actually gives us a little bit of money. So yeah, money seems to be the uh, the soul currency here, and uh, that that's perfectly fine with me. That is perfectly fine. I'm actually just going to award this to myself, I guess. And uh, it has no garrison. I'm actually unsure what I'm supposed to... Uh, okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. From Ashes, uh, Ashes of the Dead, he rose a new party of minions. Okay, so wait a second. If I continue doing this, look at this. Does this actually work? Does it? It does. Okay, don't fix that. <laughs> don't fix that. I'm perfectly fine with this. This is actually kind of hilarious and awesome. So you don't you don't need to you don't need to fix that. I think that's pretty fun. And now we've just got that guy to help us out as well. That's very cool. All right, so I'm just gonna corrupt the land here. And then we will see what uh, what we can do. But yeah, this is actually kind of hilarious because you can just destroy it. And then from the ashes of the dead, new things will come up. And you can see that. Look, there he, there, there he goes. There's a, there's a minion party right there. So you can literally force spawning of many, many minions. So uh, yeah, you don't need to fix that, mod creators. <laughs> uh, you can fix it if you want. You really can. I really don't mind. But yeah, I think I've spelled this wrong. I think I've spelled this wrong. I need to look it up. I think I've spelled it wrong. But anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.